Welcome back chaps. I have made this video for anyone who's feeling a little bit overwhelmed in their life. Maybe you lack a purpose and direction. Maybe you have a business that's successful but you are struggling with different parts of that business and you're feeling overwhelmed or maybe you've never made any money and you still live at home and you're just a little bit lost in your life and I think life is actually quite simple. This is a guide to take you back to the simplicity of life to give you a purpose and a roadmap that you can work through step by step to master your life to get a sense of fulfillment and happiness and joy and progress in your life because that's where I feel a lot of these things stem from. If you feel you're progressing and becoming a better man and making something of your life then you're going to be happy, you're going to be fulfilled. So let's get into this full guide on, on how to master your life. And, and you can work through this in a couple of different ways. So it's going to be long. I've only just started filming, but I, I imagine we'll run at about an hour or 45 minutes. And I would recommend you for the first time, if you're super overwhelmed, you maybe take a 45 minute walk and you stick this in the headphones and you just get the ideas into your brain and a bit of inspiration. You just relax for 45 minutes and listen and, and go for a nice walk. If you're a little bit further along, you may be not so overwhelmed, sit down, get it on your computer, get a pen and paper out and just do the tasks with me. We've also got some links underneath the video for the worksheets and things that you can go through. So it lends itself to you kind of like a course because there's different objectives that we're going to go through and, and master together. But here are the components, uh, the key components to this video and to mastering your life. Number one is manifest your dream life and build your character. Number two, sleep is wealth. The formula, we're going to go very heavily into the formula and optimizing your sleep. I believe that gives you a huge advantage. Don't add, subtract. As I said, life is simple and success is simple. So figuring out what you need to focus on and what you need to subtract. Creating the optimal environment, why your habitat and the place that you dwell is so important to your success as a man and personal brand. The modern day master key with the in the age of AI and various different business models and uncertainty I think the personal brand gives you bulletproof armor against any of the difficulties that modern life might throw at you and I think it's actually quite a necessity so I'm going to show you how I built my personal brand how I make money with it how you can do the same why it can be fun it doesn't have to be stressful um, how you let go of being worried what other people think of you so let's get started with it was all a dream how manifesting changed my life. And we're going to do an activity together in a second, but I'll tell you how manifesting changed my life. So two years ago, I was working a nine to five in the UK in Bournemouth in sales. And I was making on a good month, probably two or $3,000 in a month, but I was massively underutilized. I didn't feel like I was at my potential as a man. I just felt I was meant for so much more and my life had become very boring and mundane. I would wake up in the morning, do exactly the same thing, eat the same food every single day, go to work, do the same things with the same people and not challenge myself. And I was just getting to this point where I'd go to sleep at night and just think, oh, I wish tomorrow I could wake up and, and be doing something different or have some excitement back in my life. And it led me down a path of self-improvement as I think it all does because you don't level up I don't think you ever level up past your level of self-improvement. As soon as you stop improving and learning, then you stop leveling up. So for me, it began with a lot of reading and a lot of, a lot of courses and a lot of studying. And I came across a couple of different sources on manifesting and creating the idea of a dream life. So I decided to sit down for a while on my own and have a good think about what I actually wanted. And I came up with this dream life and it went a little bit like this. So I live on a tropical island. I live in paradise. I wake up every morning in a three bedroom villa, luxury cotton bed sheets, 10 out of 10 girl laying next to me. I wake up, have my coffee. I'm making money online. I go outside, tan myself by the pool, work out. By, the, by 2 p.m. I finished all my work for the day. I've earned $2,000 and I go and have dinner with my friends. That's a very short and condensed version of my dream life. But within a year of writing that down and manifesting it every day, that was my life. That was my life and then we far surpassed it within a year. So in regards to manifesting, I heavily believe that this is incredibly important to know where you're going, to have the map. You, you can never have the map without the destination. You must know the destination and most of us don't truly know what we want. 
And that is normally a big issue. So we're going to fix that right now. And I've created a notion that you guys can use. I want you to do this challenge with me. If you've never created a dream life or manifested anything in your life before, I'm going to teach you how to do it. And the link's underneath this video. So just go on there, click the link and get this in Notion. So you really need to sit with yourself whilst you do this task. And I'm going to do it with you. But you can pause this video and really start to think about what you want from your life. And the, the first way I ever did this was I asked myself the question, if I had all the money in the world and I'd already bought all the things I wanted and I'd partied around the world and I'd done all this, the, the exciting stuff and I still have to have a day-to-day -day life, what would I spend my time doing if I still had to sort of work or do something? And in my head, when I asked that question, it came to, well, you'd want to live somewhere sunny and, and hot and in a nice climate. You, love working out so you'd want to go to the gym every day you want to be surrounded by good people uh, good friends because i get a lot of fulfillment out of conversation and and spending time with good friends and brothers and you want a beautiful girl obviously by your side a companion somebody that you can rely on who believes in you as a man and i started to fundamentally realize what i wanted and then i got very very specific with it so the first thing we'll do, we won't do the top five goals just yet. The first thing we'll do is visualizing the dream day. So I just want you to sit there and have a think for a minute about what you want from your life and how the ideal day would go if you were to do it. This is a day you can live every day. This isn't an especially um, special or important day. This is just your standard life. How would you want your standard life to look and it can be absolutely anything you want there's no judgment here there's no hold on what you can imagine anything that you can imagine you can achieve any single one of you there's so much in the world right now that's negative and pessimistic uh, and especially in the online world of people that don't think you can achieve things and you absolutely can everything great that's ever happened in this world has come from another human being that is just like you and i so there's no reason why we need to limit ourselves here. So dream the biggest dreams and this is your time to do it. So number one, you wake up in the morning, write down what, what sort of time you're waking up and write it as if it's like a story of your day. Today I woke up at 5.30 a.m. I'm in a four post luxury four poster bed made of mahogany wood. I'm laying next to a beautiful 10 out of 10 blonde with huge voluptuous tits, something like that. So you go through what time you're waking up, what are you doing as soon as you get out of bed, who's with you, what is the bed like, where are you living, what country are you in, what's the weather like, and then work your way through the day. So you go downstairs, do you have coffee, do you work out first thing, do you like working out early in the morning, do you do your work early in the morning, are you making content, are you taking phone sales calls, what is it you're doing to make your, to make your money to, to get that cash in. If you're going to the gym, what car are you driving? Are you driving a Lamborghini, are you in a, are you in a truck? Are you driving a motorbike? How are you getting to the gym? What gym do you go to? Who do you go with? Who's in your life? How is your life structured? Who do you have lunch with? Do you pay the bill at lunch? Is that something you've always wanted to do? Is pay the bill for your friends? How much cash do you have in your pocket? What watch are you wearing? What clothes do you wear? This is your dream life. So if you could have things exactly manicured the way that you want it for your entire being, that is how you write this down and just pause this video and really have a think and the clearer you can make this vision the more likely it is to to come true so the first time i ever did this vision mine was so crystal clear the scenery the bed sheets the girl all of it i had specifically in my mind the leather inside this inside the truck the motorbike i was i was driving all of it i achieved all of it i've had i've moved on to a new one now but all of it I've had and I achieved that dream life. So it has to be very, very specific. After you've done that, that dream, that dream day will have an essence of, of the kind of person you are. So I want you to write down after that five statements about the kind of man that you are. I'll give you some examples. And this is the man that you're going to live it in alignment with. This is the man you are going to become because you can be this right now. I'm courageous and brave. I do not let fear control me. Tr control my decisions. I live in abundance. 
They're a couple examples, and these can be absolutely anything you want, but these five statements I want you to look at every day, and you're going to become this person. This is where everything starts. This is how manifesting begins. So after this happens, you can come back up here, and with your dream day and the person that you are and you are becoming, you will then write your top five goals for 2023. For example, one of mine is make £250,000. in a month and write down based on this dream life the five things you need to do by the end of the year to start becoming this person so if you put pro fighter literally one of your goals could be to be consistently training at the boxing gym or if you want to make 10 grand a month to start researching ways to make 10 grand a month to find yourself a job to get into online high ticket sales to start talking to people that are already making that kind of money to improve your network these are the things you need to do. So based on this dream life, what are the steps before the end of 2023 that will allow you to get there? And you write those in there. And as you can see, there's a few books that are also listed in this in this uh, document. Hard Times Create Strong Men and The Way of the Superior Man. Psycho-Cybernetics. I would start with this, especially if you're struggling with your mindset. This is a beautiful book on mindset. It absolutely works and it teaches you why manifesting will bring you what you want in life as long as you back it up with action. So this will really start to provide you with the roadmap of knowing where you want now want to go. You're very clear on the vision. You're, you, when you read psycho you'll then understand that now your brain knows the destination and your true aim, your definite purpose. It will do anything it can to lead you there. It's like when you think about buying a certain type of car and then you see that car everywhere, a red Lamborghini, for example, and then suddenly red Lamborghinis pop out from everywhere. Though I don't actually think I've ever seen a red Lamborghini in my life, so that's a bad example. But you get what I mean, and it works the same way. It's your automatic guidance system in your brain, and it 100% works. Visualization realizations, you see a little section here that is, every day you're going to sit down, you're going to read this, and you're going to tell yourself that you 100% can achieve it, and you're going to visualize that dream life, and you're going to feel it, and you're going to see it in your mind, and you're going to visualize this person, and you are going to become that person. During that, you may have some realizations about what you want, about your future, about what you need to do. You're going to write those here every single day. And then your daily habits. What habits would this person involve themselves with? Daily habits. Would, would the courageous and brave person, would they, would they be scared of sparring in a gym? No, they wouldn't. They'd be sparring every week and they'd be going into it brave. Would they be scared of standing up for somebody else in an altercation in the street, in, a, in an argument, standing up for themselves even? No, they wouldn't. So what habits are you going to do? Do you want to be courageous and brave? Maybe you need to spar twice a week in, in the boxing gym. So that is what you want to put in there, your daily habits. That is number one. That is step number one, manifesting your dream life. Hopefully you've paused this video and you've built out your dream life. Once you have, we can now go on to the next steps. Health equals wealth. And there's something called the health law of attraction. So the healthier and more vital you are, the higher energy frequency you have, the, the, the higher vibration frequency you have as a person, and the more good you attract into your life. The more unhealthy you are, the more sick you are in your mind and in your body, the lower frequency you have, the less you attract into your life, the less money you make. Everything begins with health. Now, the reason health is so important as an entrepreneur is because you must understand if you stop, everything stops. Your health and well-being must be your most heavily guarded fortress. It is the foundation on which we build everything else. As a man, if you are sick, if you're unhealthy, you have no energy, you have no ability to create new ideas, you have no ability to earn money, you have no freedom. So health, no matter how busy your business is, no matter how much stress is on your, on your plate, understand you must make time for rest and recovery and good health and training and eating well or your body will make you sick and force you to have that rest and recovery period itself. That is just a law that it will happen 100% of the time. You must look after your body and your health. And when you do, everything else becomes easier. This is me five days ago. I looked a lot more tanned. I was in Dubai. And uh, I'm obviously in incredible shape. I look after myself and I have done for a long time now. And I'm very dialed in. And I make sure that health and fitness comes first before any business stuff. 
if I'm not feeling good, I can't inspire, I can't motivate other people, I can't do my work. So I'm going to teach you a couple of bits that I think are super important on keeping good health. Number one in, in health that is often really fucked up for most entrepreneurs and young guys involved in the hustle culture is sleep. Most people don't really value sleep at all and think oh, I'll sleep when I'm dead and, and that's true you will and you'll die sooner if you don't sleep well so let's put it like this if somebody offered you a pill because we all like our our supplements and our quick fixes if someone offered you a pill that cured brain fog boosted your confidence made you more muscular less fat improved your skin reduced your risk of cancer and made you generally a happier and more lively person how much would you pay for it I'd sure as hell pay a lot I take that shit every day. You have that for free inside of your body and it's called good sleep. Good sleep will give you all of those benefits plus many, many more. But you have to make sure your sleep is optimized. I believe sleep is the biggest life upgrade available to anyone right now. It ranks above nutrition, training, supplements. You have to learn to sleep like a pro and everything else will become substantially easier. I recently read a book, Why We Sleep. I'd highly recommend it actually if you if you don't believe me when I say sleep is the most important thing you can do right now. If there's one thing I took away from that book it's that sleep is absolutely ground fucking zero. It is the foundation of everything. It will be the biggest impact on your life out of anything in this video and the recommended amount of sleep is eight hours plus per night. I'm going to show you massively how to improve your sleep quality and that will massively improve everything else in your life. For those that still thinking in the head oh yeah I don't need sleep some of the richest guys, most successful guys I know, go to bed at 9 p.m. and get their eight hours. They fall asleep with the, with the sun and they wake up with the sun. And that's for how we're naturally wired. And you're missing out on quite a few essential functions of the body if you, if you decide that you're not going to sleep a lot. There's a time and a place for the occasional late night. But over long periods of time, it will destroy your cognitive function. It will depress your mood. It makes life so much harder for you. One hour of well-rested, focused work when you've had a good night's sleep is worth five hours of tired, groggy work. So you're really, ki you're really killing yourself if you decide that you're not going to sleep to fit some extra hours of work. And you might as well sleep three or four more hours because you're 5x in your productivity in the time that you're, in, in the time that you're awake. Sleep is directly correlated to making good decisions in all aspects of your life. So if you keep fucking up, you keep reaching for the donut, the cigarette, the crack, if you're a big crackhead, then, <laughs> then sleep better and you won't want to do that. But why your sleep is fucked and why most people's sleep is fucked. Humans were made to rise and fall with the sun, doing active work grounded into the earth, very little stimulation, sleeping and waking up at exactly the same time for adequate rest and recovery. No one does this now. We're over-caffeinated and over-stimulated. We are living much, far more complex lives that feel like they've got so much more going on than just falling asleep and then waking up to work the farm and then falling asleep because there's no fucking electricity or light, so there's nothing else to do. Now you can stay up all night, entertained all evening, and wired into a dopamine matrix on your phone. So that's why sleep's fucked. But how do we fix this? How have I fixed this for myself? First, we've got to understand sleep and how it works so that we can fix it. First thing I want to bring your attention to, and a lot of you will know I'm big on the whole having high testosterone as a man because you need it to feel like a man and make good decisions and feel certain of yourself. Testosterone is produced between 12 and 3 a.m. So if you're going to sleep at 2 a.m., you're missing some of the most vital, vitally important times your body has to make testosterone, which means your testosterone is going to be lower and you are going to lack testosterone, which is going to make you less confident, less sure of yourself, less able to build muscle, more able to build fat and generally make your life worse. So the next is the sleep cycles. How does sleep actually work? So sleep is, is basically three different parts. It can be split down into a few more, but essentially it's three. It's REM, REM sleep deep sleep and core sleep so your core is like your light sleep and you're the majority of your 
night will be spent in core sleep, as you can see here, five hours and 23 minutes. REM sleep is rapid eye movement sleep, and it's when you dream. And these areas of sleep are responsible for creating your new ideas in your brain, for getting rid of any trauma or, or worries or anxieties that you had the day before, for refreshing your mind. So when you wake up after great REM sleep and you feel well rested and, and, the, and the night before you were worrying about something, and then the next morning you wake up and it's like, oh, that's that, that, that doesn't matter anymore. That's why, that's what REM sleep does. It's incredibly important. If you drink alcohol, even one glass, it destroys your REM sleep. Same with weed as well. If you smoke weed to go to sleep, you don't get the REM, which is why people can end up really quite mentally disturbed if they do a lot of drugs because they're not getting the adequate rest and recovery for their minds. And your deep sleep is when your body recovers when your body's cleared of, of toxins and free radicals and your muscle repairs. So also incredibly, incredibly important. Sleep cycles are when you've had all of this. So you've had your core sleep, your REM sleep and your deep sleep and they happen together in a cycle and then they happen again. And the, ideally you want four to five complete cycles of 90 to 120 minutes per night, which you will get if you have eight hours sleep. Now there's another thing that has an impact on when you fall asleep and how tired you get and that's melatonin and it's connected to your circadian rhythm. So your body will naturally have a clock inside of it that goes it's night time, it's time to sleep, let's make Jack tired so that he can go to sleep and get rest and then in the morning let's wake him up so he's ready to do his work. Your body has that naturally already and it's through the release of melatonin into your brain that this happens and melatonin will start being produced when it gets dark however if you sit there in the light or watching screens then you are going to suppress that melatonin it's not going to be produced which is why when it gets to 7 8 p.m and it's dark outside it should be dark in your house you should have red light in your house you should not be having any bright lights or screens you need to start winding down so you actually get tired and another thing to consider is caffeine Caffeine has a half-life of four to six hours, which means caffeine reaches its peak in your blood within about 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes. But then it takes four to six hours for half of that caffeine to be removed. So you've still got half of that coffee in you five hours after you had the original coffee, which means if you had that coffee at 7 p.m. at midnight, you've still got half the coffee in. And what coffee does, it blocks your body's ability to feel tired. It blocks the synapses and there's a hormone which I can't quite remember the name of, but it basically blocks the production or the intake of a hormone that makes you feel tired. It's not melatonin, it's another one. It's like, it's like your body's internal clock to tell you when you're tired and caffeine suppresses that. That's why it's good at keeping you alert and awake. But if it's doing that in the nighttime, it's very, very hard to, to fall asleep. So that might be another reason why your sleep is is quite far. So how do we go about fixing this? Now you've got a good idea of sleep and why it's important and, and, and how much sleep you need and, and why you need it. You need to be able to track it. Without tracking, you don't know if you're improving. You don't know the levels of sleep you're having. You don't know if you're just having light sleep all night. You don't know how much REM and deep sleep you're having. So there's a couple of different tools you can use. I choose the, I've got the Apple Watch, the Ultra, because I had the Aura Ring, but the Aura Ring just used to tell me I never slept. It said I was awake all night, I think because I toss and turn quite a lot or I'm quite an active sleeper. I like to go for, for runs in my sleep and things like that. I'm both quite an odd person uh, when I sleep and I talk a lot and things. But the aura ring just said, you don't sleep. And it was making me feel upset because I was like, well, now I fucking feel more tired because the aura rings told me I've had one hour sleep and I've been in bed 10 hours. Apple Watch, on the other hand, for me has trapped my sleep quite nicely. It tells me when I wake up, it's very accurate, it tells me my deep sleep, my REM sleep. Um, you can use the Whoop Band, I've never used it personally, or the Fitbit. It, there's a lot of different price ranges here. Apple Watch was expensive, it makes sense for me. It was about $800, I think, so quite quite a lot. Aura Ring, I can't remember how much that was. You'll have to check, but it's less than the Apple Watch, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Whoop Bands, not sure how much they are, but Fitbits, you can get, you can get them for like 100 bucks. So there's different ranges there, but I recommend you start you start tracking your sleep, make a little sleep diary and just start knowing what type of sleep you're getting and how much sleep you're getting each night and aiming for that eight hours. If you're struggling sleeping at the moment, I want you to do the following. So step number one, cold room. It's very, very important that the room you sleep in is as cold as possible. It will give you much deeper sleep if you are in a cold room than in a hot room. If you can afford it and it's particularly hot in your house, you live in a hot climate, 
you want to buy an air conditioning unit that goes in the room and you want that on, you want to put it on before you go to sleep and you want that room as cold as possible. I've got air conditioning in this uh, condominium so my air conditioning is set to 16 degrees Celsius. That's how I sleep. The next thing that you need to do is make sure you sleep in a dark room because if it's light, your eyes sense that it's light and they stop the production of melatonin and they want to wake you up. And I think the best way to do this is just put an eye mask on because you don't have to fuck around in the room. You don't have to apply a load of new blinds. You can get the blackout blinds if you want. Here, it would just be a nightmare for me. The windows are so big. So I wear a nice eye mask and I wear that every single night for sleep and it makes sure I'm in a totally dark, blacked out room. After a couple of nights, you get used to it and it's gonna make you sleep a lot better. Another thing, if you're waking up a lot in the night, if you're a very light sleeper, some white noise, a white noise machine or a white noise uh, app on your phone, just to play some rain, something in the background. And what this does, it gets your ears used to a certain frequency. So if you live in the city, it will get your ears used to a sound in the room. And then any sounds that are within that frequency are not gonna disturb you or wake you up. Egyptian cotton bed sheets. I think a lot of people will look at bedding and sleep apparatus and think fucking hell it's so expensive like why does it cost so much because it's such it's such a fundamental part and has such a huge roi so really invest as much as you can in making sure that bed is a fucking palace to go into it is your palace of sleep that's what you want to turn it into and getting high thread count egyptian cotton bed sheets that are nice and cool on your skin and they feel great. It's gonna make you wanna get into bed early and it's gonna make you wanna sleep more. Bed is for making babies and sleeping only. And then actually, if you've got a spare room, I'd recommend making babies in another room and having sex in another room and then sleeping in, in the one bed so you don't get it sweaty and, and dirty, your, your sleep palace. But some of you might only have one bed. But what I mean by that is don't fucking work in bed. Don't work in bed. You can read your book in bed. You can wind down in bed, but you shouldn't be working and you shouldn't really be watching TV in bed either. When you get in that bed, it's time to sleep. It's just as important as all the other things in your life. So you've got to take it seriously. No food before bed. This, is, this will increase your heart rate in the night and it gives your body something to do. So it will allow, it will start your body digesting food rather than resting and recovering and focusing on sleep. So two to four hours before bed, stop eating. You're, if you go to bed a bit hungry, you'll wake up far more well rested. No phone two hours before bed. You've got to start turning these. If you're struggling with sleep, you've got to start turning the screens off and you've got to wind down. You've got to let the brain relax. The brain's getting ready for sleep. Stop working. You've done your work for the day. You've woken up early. You've done your work at least two hours before bed. That phone gets turned off, put in another room. All the screens go off. You start reading, relaxing, doing some meditation, spending time with your loved ones, having a nice like a chamomile tea or something to get you ready for sleep, a nice hot bath. You are spending time now resting, relaxing. All work that could be done for the day has been done and you will resume tomorrow well rested and you will get the rest done in the morning. That's a problem I had. I was working all the way up into bed. I was fucking still on my phone in bed and it fucking wrecks your sleep. It makes you less productive the next day. No water, two hours before bed. Otherwise you wake up in the night to go to the toilet. So. Try and avoid drinking water two hours before bed. Make sure you're hydrated, um, but make sure that you stop drinking th those two hours before and you go to the toilet. Four eggs before bed. This isn't going to help you sleep, but it will massively increase your testosterone production because you will give yourself the cholesterol needed to make testosterone in the night, meaning you wake up feeling more of a man. Audiobooks on sleep time are major hack that I've used. If it's an audiobook that's either a story or just something that's light listening. You don't want anything that's gonna get your brain going too much. But just putting that audio book on quietly on your phone, in the corner of the room, away from your bed, put the phone on airplane mode, but have that audio book downloaded, have it on a 30 minute sleep timer, just gives you something to, to listen to and you'll find yourself falling asleep before that audio book even turns off. I use magnesium, a magnesium supplement to help with my sleep. I lock all my doors. That's just to make you feel safe. Because sometimes your subconscious, if you haven't locked your bedroom door, you live in a house with other people, there's a part of your subconscious that maybe doesn't feel 100% safe. So I go and lock the front door, back door, I lock my bedroom door, and then I just know my, my subconscious, my brain knows I'm totally safe, I'm in my fortress, and I'm ready for sleep. If you're struggling to sleep, no caffeine after 12 p.m. Midday, caffeine cut off because of the half-life, it's going to help you a lot in getting yourself off to sleep. Now, the following, all of this comes together with a morning routine. When you follow a good morning, when you start your morning well, well, 
well rested, you get the show on the road, then your day goes better and you feel better and well accomplished and you can start to rack these wins up. So I'll give you my morning routine. At the moment, the key rule is no phone. The phone will fucking hijack your day quicker than anything else. The phone must not be looked at before midday or before these tasks are done. You must set your goals and intentions the night before. So this is my power list and you must read daily. It sets the brain up right. So what I'll do, normally I'll wake up depending on the day, sometime between 5.30 a.m. and 8 a.m. So quite a big range there, but obviously sleep's number one. So if I have gone to bed a bit later, say midnight, I'm not gonna wake up at 5.30 a.m. Even though I might be more productive in the morning, I need that extra hours sleep. So I've got, I'm able to do more productive work. So my power list, for example, I like to wake up and instantly have a liter of water. I take 10 deep breaths. You need to get oxygen into your brain. You need to get oxygen into your system to feel happy, to feel alive. So take those 10 deep breaths. I like to get out on the balcony in the sun if it's if the sun's come up and I read 10 pages of a book, ideally self-improvement book or something that you're learning to stimulate your mind. You, you Ideas don't come out of nowhere. They have to be stimulated and given to you by something. So to read every day is just to put fuel in the tank. It's to give you new things to think about. Read my goals, manifest whilst I'm having my coffee, same as we did before the, with the sheet that you've now got. Then I make my slides, schedule Zoom call, plan new elite live call topic for my mastermind group, for my network, the new elite, planning the live call, making the slides for the live call, value post on Telegram, value post on IG, gym, workout, boxing, food. I just plan all of this. This is my Monday power list. I just plan this the day before in the nighttime. And I do this on my iPad, which has no apps on it. And then I tick them off as I go through. And then before I go to bed, before I do my wind down routine, I plan the next day. So that, that would be my tips for you in terms of morning routine. And you can make this however you want, but you need a morning routine and you need to not look at the phone. A little bonus for you. The supplements I take to boost testosterone productivity and optimize my life and help my sleep. There's only one supplement that, well, there's many supplements you can take, but only one you need to take if you want to get all of these different supplements in one. I take the Kingmaker supplement. The Kingmaker is great because you don't have to take a, a load of different pills. You've got the all in one, your vitamin D3, your magnesium, your zinc. You've got your Fedoja extract. You've got your ashwagandha, all in one pill. So the Kingmaker supplement, incredibly useful. Also the coffee I drink is Alpha Grind coffee made by the same guys, made by Top Shelf Grind. And the Alpha Grind coffee is a nootropic coffee. So it helps to get the brain firing, really gives you that extra boost. Don't drink too much of this stuff, it is strong. I take my creatine daily and I take my fish oil. So after you wake up, that is that would be the stack that I'm currently on for managing my testosterone and my health and just making sure I've got all of those covered. So there you go. If you want those supplements, the Alpha Grind and the Kingmaker, they are linked underneath this video. They are the company of my good friend, Robert Oliver. On to simplifying your life, the success time equation. The reason that we are drawn to minimalist design and living spaces is because inside we wish we all lived simpler lives. We wish things weren't so bloody complicated. And the good thing is they don't need to be. When you simplify and strategize, you will find much more fulfillment in your life. And luckily, very few things actually make a difference. Pareto's law, a 20% of actions lead to 80% of results. And 80% of results come from 20% of the actions, which means fundamentally you can cut away 80% of what you're doing, focus on the 20% and be more relaxed and still get far better results than if you were doing the 100% before. So most people actually have a bit of a block in their brain and they don't want to believe it's all so simple. And the first thing I want you to do to find this simplicity to help you with that is a time audit, time management for pros. And I got this from, what's his name? Sam, Sam Ovens, absolute legend. And the time audit is for seven days, you are going to have a timer on your phone for 30 minutes. Every 30 minutes, it's going to go off. And you are going to write down what you're doing at that time. It's absolutely fundamental, no matter where you are in business and life, to know where your time is going and to optimize. For each time, for each slot and for each task you've done, I want you to write down whether it was a positive task or a negative task and, and, and why it is. And then ruthlessly eliminate any of the negative tasks and keep doing this until you've dialed yourself in. Deciding what you shouldn't be doing is just as important as knowing what you should be doing. 
if you have decided you want to be a millionaire entrepreneur, does that millionaire entrepreneur spend his time drinking and smoking? Does he spend his time watching TV and Netflix? Does he spend his time eating junk food? Or does he optimize his health and do his work? So then you know whenever you're doing any of those tasks that you shouldn't be doing, you need to cut them out. Does a champion boxer, does he spend his nights out drinking and throwing, throwing stacks at strippers? We've all done it. I understand. It's fun. I like it as well. But if I want to be, for, for me personally, if I want to be a boxer, I can't do that. So I have to cut it out of my life. And I can't drink and I can't smoke. And I'm very happy about that. And I feel a better man for it. Next thing that you should do is build the right habitat. Humans are very heavily influenced by their environment. You're very heavy, heavily influenced around by, by the things that are around you, the people around you, your network, the environment that you live in. And it should be as, your habitat should be make it as easy as possible for you to produce good, solid work, for you to be healthy, for you to be somebody that lives in alignment with your dream life. How do you eliminate distractions in your life that take your focus away and build a positive habitat. You've got an object audit from Sam Ovens again. Go through your house and list every object that you see on a daily basis. So I'd walk around the house, lamp, pen. Down here, we've got a PlayStation. I'm lucky because I don't actually play PlayStation. It doesn't really interest me. But if you've got that in your room, for example, or in your office, like it is for me, and a TV and you find yourself getting distracted by it, that needs to leave the room because that is something that's in your environment that's taken away from your success. In my environment, camera, that's a positive. In my environment, that's a positive thing to have because my job is creating content. So if this is around, it's much more likely I'm gonna turn it on and film something. My, my desk, when I sit here, I've got my headphones, I put on my Brain FM, I do my deep work and I've got very little else around me to distract me. I've got a great view. And my apartment is very tidy, very clean, clutter-free. What you want to do is have everything in your environment conducive to work. So, for example, I have to do some manifesting every day on my definite purpose, my, my goals, my dream life. So my dream life and everything is written on paper and it's hanging above my coffee machine. So when I have my coffee, I can take a minute whilst it brews. And that way I never forget to read and manifest those dreams. So things in your life have to be set up that way and your apartment needs to be fucking clean. If it's clutter, it needs to go. You need minimalists, you've got to get rid of things. Don't add things to your life. Get rid of everything, order everything. That's how, the, how your outside environment is, is how your brain is on the inside. You need to make sure your apartment is your safe space, your area is your safe space, it's your money-making machine, it's not your biggest distraction. Same with your phone. If your phone's fucking binging at you and going, bah, 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 look at me, look at me. Uh, someone's messaged you, you've got a like. Bah, 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 bah. Your brain's going to get fried. You're going to fucking overload the system. Your dopamine's going to be fucked. You can't do anything. So this needs to become a money-making machine. Only things that make you money should be on this phone. It needs to be optimized. It needs to be quiet. It needs to be silenced. You can't have this distracting you and ruining your life because it will. Essential upgrades. This is this is one of the things that I learned from uh, Iman Gadzi. Essential upgrades basically means once you start to have some success and make a little bit of money, let's say you make your first 10 grand month, your money should go back into your environment and make him work more enjoyable rather than spending it on luxuries and things like a vacation or a holiday. At first, you need to reinvest in what's getting you the results. So essential upgrades would be something like, if you work and, and need to focus for a long time on your laptop and you work in coffee shops, buy the best noise cancelling headphones. I've got the um, AirPod Max. I invest in my work environment. I find it a joy to wear these. I love to listen to Brain FM on these and, and focus and get these on. And it builds a nice environment and it builds a pleasant work environment. If, if your laptop's shit, if it's taking ages to load, you're gonna do less work because it's frustrating. So you need the best laptop and that's what you should invest in. You should invest in your space, the best standing desk because it's gonna increase your productivity. Yes, this is money you're still spending, but it's gonna bring a huge ROI. If your phone turns off, and has no battery and it's fucking smashed to pieces and you hate using it and the audio's bad, buy the best phone. How are you gonna do business when you literally working from a piece of shit? If you're making content, you need a camera setup. You want the best water, you wanna invest in the best food prep, best clothes, cable management, anything that makes working seamless and fun. I'll give you an example of this is, imagine you have just bought a brand new set of golf clubs. You're gonna go and play fucking golf. Imagine if you just bought brand new boxing gloves. 
you're going to want to go and box. You can use this to make yourself more productive or you can use it to distract yourself. You've maybe you've done your first 100 grand month. So what do you go and do? You go and buy a supercar. Now what do you want to do? Do you want to work? You want to drive your supercar. You want to drive your supercar. So you go and drive it. And then that takes away from work time. And then your income starts to come down. So what you need to do is take that money and invest in work environment. If that 100 grand, you build yourself a whole brand new office, all of the best equipment, state-of-the-art, state-of-the-art optimization of health, new trainers, more discipline, then you work more, you make more money. Doesn't mean you can't ever have toys, but you need to optimize your life accordingly. Now, on to the final destination, the final part of this video. Personal brand, the modern day master key. I believe nowadays that personal brand is no longer an option, it's essential. This is how to get paid forever for being you from a phone, the thing you have in your pocket. The latest iPhones are literally production studios, editing suites, CRM, sales tools, marketing team, unlimited information portal, all in your pocket. You have the ability to become your own brand, your own person. And I'm gonna run you through how this has changed my life and how you can do the same thing. So a bit of my story. I started taking personal branding seriously on September 11th, 2021. And you can see it just here on my stories archive. So I have not stopped posting daily stories since then. I've posted every single day. It took me exactly 627 days to reach my first 90,000 pound month. So $110,000 took me 627 days of building a personal brand. And most people will say, they're scared to put themselves out there. And what I say to this is, you don't realize that people don't really give a fuck what you post online, unless it relates to them and they, they enjoy it and they find some value. So if you're putting stuff that's out that's boring and people don't like or it's a bit weird, nobody really cares, they're more concerned with themselves. Most of the time you actually probably wish you were confident enough to put content out there. I've heard a lot of people say they don't want personal brands, they want to stay private. I, do, I don't think that's actually true. I think if you're honest with yourself, you'd love a personal brand, you'd love to make money for being you, but you're embarrassed and shy about what other people are going to think of you. You very quickly, the first thing you do is you get rid of that feeling. That is so important. You have to fucking throw caution to the wind and you have to go all in because you only get one chance. And why if there's something with such a, a big potential upside, why would you ever stop yourself from achieving that? Having a personal brand can not only allow you to create your own business. One of the things we help guys do in the 10K Accelerator is building a personal brand that helps you get hired in online high ticket sales. How do you get good at this? Observing the best personal brands. What makes certain brands so lucrative? What allows people to make so much money online? And I found a couple of key points. People like Imran Gadzi and Wes Watson, various different personal brands, Grant Cardone. A lot of personal brand comes from lifestyle. So that doesn't matter how your lifestyle is. It's great if you have a luxury lifestyle, but if your your thing is that you love fishing and you show a fishing lifestyle, people are gonna that like fishing are gonna watch that. And maybe you keep showing that and they start to watch and you get a following because you're posting stories about fishing every day. And then you decide that because you've done so much fishing, you wanna do an ebook on fishing. And people like you for you and they like you for doing your fishing. And you put your ebook out and you make 10 grand in your first month because the people that follow you believe in you and your thing. So you don't need to be like me, you don't need to be like Iman or anyone else, but you need to be like you and have your interests. And that really goes into your personal brand. So your lifestyle is basically your brand. Splitting the, splitting the crowd, so having your own opinions. If you were to, let's say, have a conversation with your brother, and I'll use that example because with your brother you're totally comfortable and you're happy to argue with him. So if he believes something and you don't believe it, you will say, I believe in this. And you might even be a little bit harsh with your opinions. That's how you need to be with a personal brand. You need to split the crowd. People need to love you or hate you. That's the best place to be. So you need to believe your things and stick to the things you believe. Middle of the road personal brands don't work. Consistency, you need to turn up daily. I've been turning up daily for over two years now on Instagram stories. And that is Instagram is kind of where everything starts and I'll run you through that. But consistency is super important. This has just got to become part of your life and you make it a fun part of your life and you try and help other people through it and you just share your journey. And you do that after 12 o'clock when you've done your work. So don't go on your phone in the morning still. And another part of personal branding is it can be shareable. So basically making posts, if you look at someone like Carnivore Alias, when you're starting out with your reels and the way you help people in the chosen topic that you're interested in, 
making that shareable is very important. If people can share it, you're going to grow quicker, you're going to amass an audience. And there's certain ways of doing this. But let's get into actually, rule number one is start now, literally today. So I'm going to show you now when I first started on Instagram over two years ago, which is going to be pretty funny because you guys are going to see that I did, had no idea what I was doing when I started. Credit repair? You don't do credit repair. I didn't know what else to talk about. And a great credit score. It me three years to basically improve my score from in the orange all the way into the dark green. Um, if you want some tips videos on, uh, on how to repay your credit and basically how to build your credit score, um, just click the poll below, let me know. Um, I'll happily put a few out there or DM me and I'll... Turns out some of you want some um, help with your credit score. Um, I'll give you basically one tip. I'll try and give you a tip a day. Um, first tip for today is something called the electoral roll. Um, most of you know what that is. You'll be on the electoral roll. If you don't, look it up. That's scary. See if you're on the electoral roll. Who is you that? Get yourself signed up. Who, the is, roll for your who is that person? That was me two years ago. That was me. I was shy. I was not ready for the camera. I felt like an idiot. I looked like an idiot. You have to. And now look, look at this now, what it's amassed, where I live in Bangkok, over 100,000 subscribers, making over 100 grand a month. That all came from personal brand, from feeling stupid for a little bit. And fuck me, it was worth it. So that's where I started. And, now I'm, and then I turned it into this. I became this guy. How the fuck did I become this guy? How did I become him? I was a fucking loser. I was a nine to five loser. I became him because I, I visioned it in my mind. I decided I wasn't going to stop. I committed to consistency and slowly bit by bit over two years, you improve so much if you just commit every day. So no matter how fucking weird you are, no matter how much of a little weasel you are, like I was, you can start today and understand you will get there in the end if you do not give up. So that's rule number one. Start today, boys. Start with, and I'll run you through how you actually post and things, but start today. That's that's number one rule. Number two, don't fucking stop. There's days when I didn't want to. There's days when people reply to me, Jack, I, I don't like your views and opinions. You're making an idiot of yourself online. You, you're never going to make it. What do you mean you're going to go to Thailand? No, you're not. Don't fucking stop. Don't let anyone tell you that you, that you should stop and don't listen to anyone else. You can do whatever you want. Get 1% better every day. Take pride in the brand. So that's something that's quite important is if you don't like your content. So back then, if, when I look back at it now, I don't like that content. I, I think I was a bit of a weirdo and loser. And I, don't, I, and I like my content now. I like what I make. I like videos like this and the way that I talk and who I am and the way I perceive myself. That's important. Take pride in the brand and improve 1% every day. So you're not consistently staying at a point where you're too shy to even show your stuff to other people. You must start, but then slowly improve and make your brand more aligned with who you are and something that you're proud of. Most people just fucking commit to the grind of putting shitty content out. You don't have to do that. As soon as you can make the content good, make it good. Just get started is important. And number four is remain authentic. No matter what, remain authentic to yourself. Don't lie, don't steal, don't cheat. And you should make sure you've got good energy and good things that you align yourself with. How to rebuild your Instagram. So this all starts on Instagram and I won't go into YouTube. Um, I've got a full per personal branding course inside the 10K Accelerator, which is linked under this video if you're more interested in that stuff. I do personal branding one-on-ones with guys inside the new elite, a high level network, which is application only listed under here. So if it's something you're interested in, there are other options, but let's start with Instagram because this is the most important and the best place to start. Step one, go through your Instagram right now and remove all pictures you wouldn't show to the love of your life or favorite celebrity. Probably a lot of you like Andrew Tate. If you wouldn't show the picture to Andrew Tate, if you think he'd turn around and call you a fucking loser, take it down, archive it. You don't have to delete it, just take it down. If you wouldn't want the love of your life judging you off that one picture, take it down. All the pictures should build a brand, should build an image. Invest, number two, invest in a style and great pictures. If you've got, right now in the world, camera qualities are so good that if you have still got shitty pictures, you are not gonna get any attention at all. So it's massively worth the investment 
of if you've got a friend with a great iPhone, you go out together, you invest in some a good style, dress well, and take some good pictures. If you can afford it, get yourself the latest iPhones, get yourself the latest cameras. It's it's not 100% important to have like the best camera setups. This is like a $5,000 camera. You can do it with a phone, one of the newer phones for less than $1,000. So I would recommend doing that is important. This is basically your workstation for a personal brand. Step three is stand for something. Have a sit down and think to yourself, okay, what do I actually stand for within this personal brand? Who am I? Like Liver King, he stands for liver is king. He likes his raw meats and barbarian diet. And some people hate him and some people love him. And that's a very good personal brand. You can see how fucking big it is. And same with Carnivore Alias. You've got to decide. If you're a fucking vegan, I don't agree with you at all. I will not watch your content. I will not like it. I don't think veganism is good. But there's loads of people that will like your content. And same if you're on carnivore diet. Vegans will fucking hate you. Carnivores will love you. If you believe in HIIT workouts, the HIIT workout community will love you. If you believe in CrossFit, the CrossFit guys will love you. If you believe in boxing, the boxing guys will love you. And other people will hate you and tell you you're wrong. That's perfect. You need to decide what you stand for and stand for it. And it can evolve over time. I mean, at the start, I, I stood for credit tips. I don't even do any of that anymore. You just got to get started with, with your current interest. Step number four is one thing you must begin today and not stop is build, is the daily stories. So you can't stop the daily stories because they are your TV show. So as you go through life, the Instagram becomes your business card in the modern day. And as you attract people just but through going through life, you're going to add them to the Instagram and they are then going to be added to your daily stories and they're going to watch you every single day. They're going to remember who you are. And these people are going to see you every day whether it's working out in the gym or what you're eating or what you're interested in. And they're either going to become a fan or they're going to unfollow you. And when they become a fan, you get 200, 300, 400, 500, 1,000, 2,000 people watching you every day that like your stuff. This then provides you the opportunity further down the line to create an offer. And you've now got a captive marketplace that you can push an offer to and that allows you to make money online. Same if you're looking for work in, in online high ticket sales like we teach in the 10K Accelerator. If you've got an optimized profile for high ticket sales, you've now got guys that might be business opportunities watching your DMs that will offer you high ticket sales roles. So don't ever stop the daily stories. They have to go out every day. Step number five, Q and A's. You wanna build a relationship with this audience. You wanna understand what questions people have for you and what interests they have in your life and answer those to build that connection. So I recommend two Q and A's per week for your Instagram. And then step six is, is would be around growth. You're not doing this to stay small forever. You want growth. You need to utilize reels, high value, shareable reels, interesting stuff, aesthetic, providing value, things that people can share. Carousels are important. So I would split up a carousel of basically, that's when you have more than one picture in a row. You got your one picture at the front, then you've maybe got one of you training, you've got one of your lifestyle, you've got one quote in there that you've written and that's shareable and you put together carousels like that around your lifestyle. And that allows people to become more interested in your content and also share your content more. And yeah, most importantly, invest in your image. Invest in yourself as a person and how the world perceives you and put that online. And they are basically the fundamentals. They are what I believe has helped me the most in mastering my life. And I hope you guys can use that. If you have found this useful and you made it this far, into this video, which is long. I'm, I'm, I'm exhausted now, but please share this with a friend and get to work on the things that we've put down. I hope to hear back from you guys in the future on how this has improved your life. If you need, if you're looking for a network of high level individuals, entrepreneurs that are going to lift you up to the next level, guys that you can learn from apply for our network down below the new elite. If you want to talk to me about personal branding, it's all done through there. And if you've made it this far, comment, hashtag optimized. If you're making under 10K a month, you're not sure how to make online money. I believe high ticket sales is the way to go. We've got the 10K Accelerator course with a sales professor teaching you exactly how to find those 10K a month jobs and learn the skill of online sales as well as optimize your life. So all of my links are down below, boys. Check me out on Instagram if you want to send me any messages. I've got a free Telegram as well. We drop daily value in that. Check out all the links. It's been an absolute pleasure and I will see you all on the next one. Whoop out, whoop out!